and the Bank of Canada was raising rates like a Hey guys, what's up? It's your man Pete and just thought I would do a short little video here to keep you all updated about what's been going on here in the Toronto housing market. You know, what's the latest scoop and sort of what I'm hearing and seeing in the streets of Toronto. And frankly, in the last six months, not a whole lot has actually happened because you all know what's been going on with the interest rates over the past few months. And we're still all watching the inflation numbers very, very closely here in the Toronto housing industry. But there seems to be a slight sliver of hope in the market where it seems more than likely that we reached a bottom in the month of July. Unsurprisingly, because it was around then that the Bank of Canada raised rates 100 basis points. And after the last rate hike of 75 basis points, which was done last week, it seems like maybe, just maybe, fingers crossed, that they may not be so aggressive on interest rates for the remaining months of the year, which would be incredible news for the housing market and the economy overall, which has been, for lack of better words to use, in an incredibly worthless piece of <laughs> of a market. Pardon my Chinese. So here to tell you more right after this. Okay, and we're back. And I apologize for not putting up more content lately because there just isn't a lot of good news to share. And I was actually on vacation as well too, since there wasn't a whole lot of action happening in the past few months anyways, which again was during a time when not a lot of people were physically here and, and the central banks have been raising rates like it's going out of style, all trying to battle out of control inflation that's happening worldwide. But if we look at the latest report from the Toronto Real Estate Board, which was for the month of August, 2022, we do see a glimmer of hope, you know, some light cracking through the darkness. Some of you have maybe even seen God, where yes, sales figures were still terrible and average sale prices were still on the low side compared to what we've seen, where we did do the lowest amount of sales for the month of July for the entire year. But August was just a singe better. And so it was also the first month in a while where we didn't see a decline in prices. In fact, we actually saw a slight uptick in prices. We're talking about an average price increase of 4,746 Canadian dollars. But to be honest, considering how bad it's been, I'll take it. So as you can see from my trusty spreadsheet over here, that prices started declining every single month starting in February of 2022, which was essentially the peak in terms of average home prices. And what the average home prices are telling me is that we reached the bottom here in July of 2022, hovering at around close to $1.1 million. And in stock market terms, essentially we've reached some sort of threshold. We've reached some sort of bottom where there's support happening around the $1.1 million average mark. Now, does that mean prices will start going back up again and taking off into the stratosphere? Well, probably not quite yet because there are literally a lot of buyers still out on the sidelines. Some have decided to rent for the foreseeable future until conditions start improving again. But what we're also seeing from the inventory numbers based on the reports in my spreadsheet here is that inventory numbers are actually dwindling. So it's actually kind of getting hard to find good properties for sale versus, you know, in late spring or early summer of this year. Because what happens is when you put your house up for sale, you don't get any showings, you don't get any offers, you don't get any interest, then typically what sellers will do is they'll find alternate arrangements for the property. So either they'll decide to stay in the property longer, they'll put it up for rent, or just take it off the market, let it sit empty and find a better time to sell it. And so as you can see, the housing market is just this constant shift and delay, right? So it's always trying to find this equilibrium and this balance, but it never really gets there, you know? So when housing inventory is low, prices go up because there's more buyers. And then when there's a lot of inventory and not as many buyers, then it becomes a high inventory environment and then you know, nothing gets done. And it's really, really hard to sort of reach this perfect equilibrium, especially in a city of this size. But again, like I said, there is some hope that the bottom has been reached and maybe we're turning the corner here in the market where prices may start leveling off or maybe even start ticking up again slightly. And the major reasons are, of course, is that summer is over. You know, the kiddies are back to school. It feels like it's a new year starting all over again, almost like January. And inside the city, it definitely feels like there's more activity. You know, there's more cars, there's more congestion, like there's just more things happening and going on around the city versus how it's been over the past two, three months in the summer. It is still a little bit quieter because a lot of people are still working from home. So there's less congestion and there's less traffic and less people on the streets, but it's definitely more alive and busier than it has been over the past several months here in Toronto, where peak summer rolled around, people were traveling, they were doing things that they couldn't do over the last two, two and a half years. And so it's totally understandable and a really big reason why the housing market and activity has been down for so much. And we definitely saw this at the airports over the summer. And I also even even heard that people trying to rent cars for weekend getaways 
it was a struggle. And so I'm not saying for sure that the market has recovered and will start taking off again here in the fall, but I think all signs are pointing to sort of things getting back to normal. As long as the interest rate hikes aren't as steep as say, you know, 100 basis points or even another 75 basis points. To be honest, even if it was 75, I think the market could handle it, it could absorb it. But if we start seeing interest rates coming in at 50 basis points or 25 basis points, that could be a positive sign for people to start moving back into the market and buying properties again. And so if you really wanna be opportunistic and you really want to start buying when prices start going up, you should really be looking now. Whether you're an investor or a home buyer, ultimately it just depends on if there's inventory available. And of course, there's still bidding activity happening in certain neighborhoods across the city. So for those of you who've been waiting for the bottom, more than likely it was in July. Of course, this all depends on inflation and other interest numbers or and other policy making decisions. Definitely, yeah, if you're looking to get into the market here in the last few months of 2022, you should definitely start looking now, researching, and maybe even start submitting offers and just seeing if you can find a great deal. We're excellent at finding good deals here at Selling Toronto, so you definitely want to give us a shout. We're here to help. We're here to negotiate on your behalf and help you score a great deal on your next home or investment, whether you're buying a condo or a house. And with everyone back in the city again, it kind of feels like it's going to get back to normal, which is a really good thing for the economy, a really good thing for the housing market, and a really good thing for the city. So don't be shy. Give us a shout so we can rep you whether you're buying, selling, or investing for the future, as now is a great time to be shopping for homes. If you haven't yet, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a like, or if you're ready to take action and do something, then you definitely want to contact us directly. Email and phone number is in the description box below. It's also at the end of the video, but I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you for being here and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.